Well, I'm back in the dirty alley. Not a good night. It's bad when you start a point guard that plays 15 minutes, right? And it's bad when you start a center that plays 20 minutes, right? And it's bad when you start a power forward that plays 17 minutes, right? Like, I don't want to live here anymore. This alley is dirty and there are bums everywhere. Not a bum, obviously. But, boy, did I have a bad fantasy night. Enough of the alley. Let's take a look at the damage. That's not good. 250.3. Did manage to snap off four head-to-heads. Thanks to the guys that lost to that. But other than that, not a lot good to talk about. And I'm officially mad at the Washington Wizards. They're going to be on my unhappy list moving forward. Uh, let's just take a look at it. So, for those that were with me for the live before lock, I ended up on Bledsoe, Frazier, Beal, Wiggins, Giannis, Denzel Valentine, Taj Gibson, Bobby Portis, and Marcin Gortat. Um, all very, very chalky except for Wiggins, and I think that's sort of my first mistake. I'm eating a little bit too much chalk um, the past two days. Um, need to try to focus a little bit more on matchup and a little less on chalk, but you know, it's always a fluid season. So, start off at point guard. Um, as I said, I had Bledsoe. He put up 43.5 fantasy points in 23 minutes. Is that right? Are those numbers right? That seems low. Four minutes. Okay. Okay. Now that's just fantasy crunchers. My method of bringing it in. So he ended up at six point two x, forty three and a half in twenty three minutes. Love it. Um, couldn't be happier with Bledsoe. He was forty eight percent owned in my double up, but yeah, it's great. Now Tim Frazier, on the other hand. Also, 48% owned in my double up. Played 15 minutes, put up 9.2 fantasy points. Good for a 1.9x. Awful. Awful, awful, awful. Did not see that coming. Did not see that garbage game coming. 92.89? Were they playing this 15 years ago? Just, it's just bad. It's a bad game. The fact that the Wizards won this game by three is shocking. It's just it's just one of those weird games. It's hard to read too much into it if you know your starting point guard and your starting center both play fifteen and twenty minutes respectively, and you get gigantic minutes out of you know, Ubre played a lot. Ubre played thirty one minutes. Sadoransky played 22 minutes. Like, the bench lineup was a plus lineup. And, you know, that's... That's going to happen sometimes, and it's going to sink... Uh, it's going to sink a lineup. And when you have three of the five starters of a team whose bench lineup plays big, you're going to get clobbered in fantasy. Um, <laughs> circling back to my... Uh, did Jimmy Butler take a time machine line regarding his defense? I still don't necessarily have a problem with what I said. Um, Jimmy Butler played 38 minutes last night, so it stands to reason that he played against uh, that bench a lot, and they carved him up. So where was Jimmy Butler when he needed to guard Jody Meeks or Oubre? 
It's just Bradley Beal went two for eleven from the field. He took one like he took one three in thirty four minutes. If we're to expect Bradley Beal to be uh, this top flight guy, he needs to take more than eleven shots in thirty four minutes when John Wall is out. Um, that's not a Jimmy Butler thing. That's a Bradley Beal thing and a final Wizards thing. Um, so congrats to anybody that was on Otto Porter, by the way. We'll get to him. Um, at point guard, if you were looking to be successful, you needed some combo of, you know, great if you had Bledsoe. Chris Dunn with a huge game, 47.8 in 32 minutes. Apparently I was just on the wrong Bulls. Um, two guard bulls went nuts uh valentine and portis not so much um rubio people were asking in the chat about him 30 points in 29 minutes hit 5.3x it's uh that's big it's really big um i didn't see that coming at all because it's ricky rubio he hadn't been playing a lot of minutes lately i want to say that he was like in the low 20s for the last two so it's good to see him rebound and then there was just a, a wasteland of Jamal Murray, Frazier, Tyler Johnson, Fox. You know, Jerry and Grant wasn't very good. George Hill, just ooh, beating upon beating. And then Tyler Eulis with a big night, 30 and 31 minutes. And then F- Frank Mason, everybody's hero. Uh, it's 24 minutes, 20.9 fantasy points, hit 6x in value. Now, just one thing to keep in mind. Um, like Frank Mason is a GPP play. Like you're happy if he gets six X at 3,500. Um, but like, that's not your dream scenario. You'd much rather have Ulis, and, and this is you know, obvious, but you like, you'd much rather have Ulis than Mason last night in a cash lineup. But, you know, kudos to those that were on Frank Mason. I, I didn't get the appeal, but again, that's. You know, because I'm playing predominantly cash. <laughs> Actually, I'm not playing cash at all. I'm just giving cash out. It's just I'm an ATM to uh, the DFS community over the past couple days. Now, shooting guard, as I said, Beal um, doesn't ever deserve to be spoken about again. Uh, Donovan Mitchell had a meh game. I didn't really see a lot of people talking about him. 26 points in 30 minutes. Next one's my big miss, in my opinion. Uh, Devin Booker, 51.6 fantasy points in 33 minutes. Um, Good for 7.3x. I didn't think it was a good spot for Booker. I didn't think, I I didn't really trust the coming back from injury. But much like uh, Victor Oladipo two nights ago, um, the injury was irrelevant to performance. And Booker came out and torched the Bulls. I'd like to see his final shooting line. So he was... Oh, yeah, I wanted to go to the box scores here. Um, I want to check out, like, the fun, good box scores on Cleaning the Glass. Booker, Booker, Booker. Like, 5 of 9 from 3 is amazing, but Getting up 23 shots, 38% usage rate. That's just a really good game out of Booker. Um, eight, assist, eight rebounds, four assists. Alex, if you won the, the Alex Len lottery and realized that he was going to play 30 minutes um, while uh, <laughs> Greg Monroe didn't play at all, if you could figure that rotation out, good for you. Um you know, I don't think anybody was really on Middleton because of the injury news. Wiggins started off pretty hot, finished with 23.4, which was awful. 3.4x in 37 minutes. Just embarrassing. Um, Rodney Hood ended up not playing, which is interesting news. Um, that probably would have led me to take Joe Ingles, who also was uh, awful, so it wouldn't have mattered too much. But at shooting guard, you wanted to have Dwayne Wade, 33 points in 27 minutes. I don't think he was really in playing the cash perspective. Um, Cavs on a back-to-back. He's Dwayne Wade. But really, the guy that you needed to have was Justin Holiday. 51.1 fantasy points in 34 minutes. So stacking that backcourt of 
Chris Dunn and Justin Holiday was definitely the play for last night. Um, and I was oddly dismissive of that Bulls game and ended up on the wrong side. It was just a big miss all around. That's a huge game out of Justin Holiday. 9.3x is crazy, but his ownership, I want to say, was only in like the 20s or 30s. Um, there wasn't any crazy high ownership coming out of that game that I can recall. J.R. Smith, uh, not bad. He you know played 41 minutes, put up 24 fantasy points, which is good enough to get him to 6x. And then you know if you had any of the guys at the bottom, Snell, Garrett Temple, Alec Burks, you'd be happy with your performance. But Will Barton uh, laid a b pretty big egg, 13.8 in 31 minutes. That's not something that anybody would have been expecting, sort of with their injury news. But really, I mean, you know, while Beal was highly owned, he's the he's the goose egg for the night at shooting guard. Then we get to small forward. Uh, I decided relatively early that I would be fading uh, LeBron on the back-to-back. -back. It just seemed like Giannis was in a much better spot. Well, Giannis played two less minutes than him, 26 minutes. Still put up more fantasy points, 61 and a half, so I'm very happy there. He hit value. And we all know LeBron was going absolutely bananas and then ultimately got the gate at uh, the end of the third quarter. So anybody that had LeBron, I'd imagine, is not a very happy camper. Ejected for the first time in his career on a 60-point fantasy game in the third quarter. Now, he probably wouldn't have been playing very much in the fourth quarter. Well, who knows? But you wouldn't have expected it. They were up you know, a pretty sizable amount with that final... What was the final there? Oh, 108.97. Okay, so they cut it in the fourth. Long game. Yeah, they outscored them by eight in the fourth and seven in the third. Um, but yeah, uh, both both big guys were both top guys at small forward. Ended up providing value, so it really didn't really it didn't really matter. You know which one you went with. Um, you know, basically same price, same performance. Butler was fine, 42 points in 38 minutes, just under value. TJ Warren with a big one, 39 in 39, um, just hit 5x. Didn't seem like a good night for, for, in my opinion, it didn't seem like a good night for uh, Booker and Warren, but ultimately I was very wrong. Then we get to Otto Porter, 30 and 32, just under value. Same with Denzel Valentine. Denzel Valentine didn't have a made shot until the second half, which is, uh, you just can't. He finished two of seven from the field. Thank God, six six boards, four assists, three steals. Like, thank God he filled out the sheet, but whew, he was minus 11 while he was on the floor. Every other starter was positive. Denzel played 39 minutes. He played 39 minutes, he took seven shots. It's two under his last five average. But you can't, that's just terrible. Like, if you're going to take five shots in 22 minutes, sure. If you're going to play 39 minutes, shoot the damn ball. Ugh. You're playing the Suns. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I liked Joe Ingles yesterday. Basically, everything that I liked uh, has a black dot next to it. So I like Joe Ingles. Uh, he put up 16 in 29 minutes, which is not good. Um, you wanted to have some piece of Ubre, 7.4x. He's the best uh, value at small forward yesterday. Josh Richardson had a decent game. And then Juan Hernan Gomez got 22 points in 28 minutes. Good to see him um, coming back, putting up 6.3. Uh, he's a good player. He just wasn't getting any minutes, you know, with Chandler and Millsap healthy. So if they're not healthy, uh, it's going to be interesting to see if he gets a little bit more run. You know, he was in talks of trades in the offseason as one of the pieces that could go out and get, like, Kyrie. You know, it would have been him and Fareed and somebody else and a pick. But, I mean, people like him. Now, power forward, which was a really weird position last night in that there weren't any highly priced guys. Markinen and Favors at 6,900 was the highest, which is really rare. Um, 
Markinen had a, an off night, 25 and 34. But Favors with a big game, 53.3 in 32 minutes, 7.7x. I don't... He was never really on my radar because of, like, where the higher salaries were. Like, because of Beal and Bledsoe and Giannis and potentially one of the big centers. Like, it was hard to pay up at power forward. So the people that paid up for favors, uh, they got rewarded. Um, I liked James Johnson. He was sort of like the guy that I wanted if I didn't have Bobby Portis. He had 25 and 31. Uh, still came in under value, but like most people last night. Um, Taj got 29.7 in 41 minutes. He ultimately ended up with value. It wasn't a very good game fantasy-wise for either one of those teams or really for Taj, but it it's just like his price isn't high enough that like if he's going to play 35 plus minutes in typical Tibbs fashion, he's just going to accumulate enough shit to get to value. Um, you know, his price is going to slowly trickle up and you get lucky and have you know, a little injury and it opens up like Gorgi Zhang as a value play. So I like the Timberwolves in fantasy. It just didn't work out for me last night. Um, I actually really like, I thought Markeith was in a great spot, but, you know, the whole Wizards team sunk uh, five points in 20 minutes. Um, you know, he shoots a lot of corner threes, and the T-Wolves give that up in a pretty big way. I thought he'd be set for that, but it turns out that's not the case. Portis sucked. 16 points in 17 minutes. Just, I'm regretful there of making that switch, but I don't really have any other options, so it's not like I was going to end up with uh, highly touted sharpshooter Wayne Ellington put up 12.9 in 23 minutes. Missed all his threes. It's going to happen. The variance of a three-point shot, but it was worth a look. Uh, his ownership was in like GPPs was sort of where I it was a little bit higher than I what I expected. So at least I know I wasn't totally crazy. Should have never had him in cash. That would have been dumb as hell. Uh, not a lot of bright spots of power forward. You want uh, Jerebko if you wanted to have the best value. Thirty point six in twenty six minutes. Um, but the power forward was just a wasteland yesterday. He didn't. The chances of you having two guys that put up value, you needed two of Favors, Gibson, Jerebko, and Scal. And I'm going to assume that nobody had any of those guys together. Maybe Favors and Gibson, but that's a really interesting lineup in cash. Then at center, um, I made the decision to go with Gortat for value. And that was, much like most of the other decisions that I made last night, the wrong one. Uh, he put up 18.9 in 20 minutes, which is actually, you know, not a bad rate. He, if he plays his normal minutes, you know, he smokes value. But he didn't. He played 20 minutes because reasons, I don't know. Why, why did, why such limited minutes? Is it just, like, I don't, it wasn't foul trouble, right? Yeah, no, he had one. One. How does Gortat play ten less minutes? Like, how do you change that rotation so much? I don't. It's bad. It's bad, it's bad, it's bad. So you wanted to be on Kevin Love if you picked a center. 54.8 fantasy points in 25 minutes. And he had, like, he was just... He was going absolutely bananas early. Um, him and Braun. So that's he was the only center out of everyone yesterday to hit value. Uh, Towns was, you know, he was fine, thirty nine and thirty nine. You're not. He didn't. He wouldn't have killed you. Uh, Jokic would have though. Twenty seven points in twenty six minutes. Two point nine x. I'm just happy I said Towns over Jokic in the chat. It's the only, like, the only question I feel like I got right. Um, and then from there, you didn't really want to have anything else. Uh, Willie Cauley-Stein, 
3x, 19 points in 24 minutes, not very good. Rolo was the only thing approximating uh, a value play, 23.9 in 34 minutes. But ultimately, you needed you needed love. He was the the only guy. So that's where we're at. Um, I had a one in 3,800 lineup yesterday. I, that's just too narrow for me. Too much chalk. So we're gonna look into building our way out of that chalkiness tonight. Not good, guys. Not good at all. But it's fantasy. Like it happens. There's day after day after day after day of like. 60 40 chances if you're feeling like the most you know like real good and that's you know you, you stretch out multiple days that suck it happens a lot um, you just have to be ready for swings and I don't I don't it doesn't even register to me anymore they happen it just makes days where you win feel so much better and day like a week where you string together like five out of the seven days of big wins. Whew. Those are the those are the weeks that like you live for. I'm in the opposite direction. I'm handing out money like I don't know, Sally May. People that hand out money. Whatever. I got nothing left. I don't want to recap this slate anymore because it sucked and I sucked. So <laughs> like if you like this video. Uh, subscribe if you can. It's always super helpful. Follow me on Twitter so you can get uh, really poor advice, evidently. But we'll rebound. We always do. Today's another day, and I feel like this Wednesday slate is the slate that I'm going to crush. So let's do that. I'll be back tonight for a live before lock. So join me there. Bye-bye.